So my name is Jeffrey Rockwell, and uh, the previous speakers took most of my thunder. But um, so I'm going to I'm going to jump to uh, the more important part, or not the more important part, but the part that I can contribute. Uh, I direct the Cool Institute for Advanced Study, which allows me to call myself the director of Cool. We have for uh, six years been running um, a conference that we call the Around the World Conference, which is an e-conference. And we set out to do this specifically to experiment with uh, ways of for formats of e-conferences at the University of Alberta in order to get to a point where we could uh, uh, support and promote uh, sustainable research practices. Um, I put the, the URL up there. You can go. We uh, This year we actually collaborated. You, you can see past videos. You can see the schedule, the one this year and previous years. And you can download a PDF that was prepared with the Office of Sustainability, which is a guide on how to do e-conferences. It is very U of A centric, however. It's very much a local guide to encourage people locally. Uh, so you know half of that probably won't apply to you. The first thing I want to talk about is some of the challenges. You know, why why is it hard, and why do people not organize e-conferences? So you'll note I'm not talking about from the individual perspective here so much as as people who are trying to organize something for a group, a research area, an association. Well, first of all, the 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 face-to-face -face Congress, something like Congress for people in the humanities and social sciences, is very much part of the rhythm and the pace of research. In my lab, somewhere in October, we start talking about paper ideas. Somewhere in November, the calls for papers come out. The, the grad students start writing drafts. We start pitching them around. December, they go in. January, February, we know what we're actually supposed to do research that year. And then there's this mad rush. And so conferences are form of are part of the pacing and the punctuation. The second thing is that at a certain level, conferences are a way of culling the field. If you take all the people that are uh, claim or in some ways are associated with digital humanities, you can actually reduce that to a smaller number of the people who show up at the annual conference. And even though we shouldn't do this, we actually do do it. And when it comes to certain forms of networking, like who do you want to, who do you trust to have to, to work on for a national grant or something like that, you end up using the conference and the people who show up as a sort of uh, unfortunate way of review or calling the people that you're going to collaborate with. Um, thirdly, conferences, especially invited keynotes, confer status. There's no doubt that you know when I submit my annual thing, uh, you know I, I get more attention or I'm more likely to get increments. If I have, if people have paid me to fly to somewhere in Europe or somewhere prestigious to give a talk. And if you're a young scholar, conferences are crucial to the networking so that people know who you are when you come up for tenure and stuff like that. So you have, you have names of people that you've met and talked to. Um, so what are some of the, the solutions and what have we learned from this process? So first of all, there are all sorts of advantages to e-conferences. They're far more inclusive. You, we, we've been able to bring in teams from places like Nigeria where I'm, I'm willing to bet the cost of a flight to, to Edmonton would be greater than some people's uh, annual salary and something like that. Uh, you, can have, you, can, you can make conferences that are truly international. In fact, we call it the around the world because the original idea was that it would go from time zone to time zone. Um, that's not how, you know, in our experimentations, we've changed formats a, a number of ways, but, but that's still sort of uh, part of the idea. The other thing, which is a real advantage, is that you can try alternative formats. In 2009, uh, a group of us started a thing called the Day of Digital Humanities, where we give everybody a, a blog, um, a WordPress instance, and they blog for a day about what they're doing, and then read each other's blogs, and comment and so on like that. It is, in effect, a form of conference, but one where you don't have to take a particular time out of your day. You just, you know, in between meetings, you post a picture of the meetings, you talk about your projects, and so on and so on, because it involves people around the world, and we typically had, you know, 400, 500 people around the world. It actually takes about 48 hours to, to run this. But because you tell people it's one day, they don't feel this is something that's going to blow out of, uh, out of, uh, out of proportion. So, 
you can change the format. You can do things very differently. Another, um, and I should mention, by the way, that that, that uh, won the Citizen Outstanding Contribution Award, and it's uh, something that has still been picked up by other people. So another part of the solution, and here's where we have to start getting intentional. We have to start finding ways to recognize and be explicit about recognizing people who, who choose this way of doing things. We have to be willing to give honoraria to invited speakers who come in by video conference, and not only giving honoraria to the people who fly in. Uh, and I can tell you that I would far prefer to get a smaller honoraria to not fly in, and then to get a big one for wasting a day going, a day coming, and stuff like that. We have to, um, we have to, if we can, we have to start bringing our students into online conferences, uh, whether they're part of a class. We have to start a, a process of habituating ourselves and our students to participating, so it, so it becomes something that is normal. And the key thing, and this is what the, the Cool Institute has been working with, is we have, to have, we have to work with the service providers on campus to get them comfortable with the variety of formats and technologies. And this is why we've been doing this uh, for six years, is to get our, uh, our people in AV comfortable with all the different things that we wanted to try and get them to the point where they can give us a price list. So we can actually budget, when people come to us asking for a grant to put one on, we can actually budget and say, yes, $5,000 buys you a half-day conference with people all over the world, plus a website, and yada, yada, yada. Um, so, and, and, and it, it's a not enough. A lot of our service groups are really good at doing it once. But we now have to move from doing it once and going, wow, yeah, that sort of worked, to getting it to become something that people think of doing all the time. And I'm very happy to say that because of the work we've been doing, we've now had a number of groups who now feel comfortable. The philosophy department is starting their, their speaker series. They've deliberately decided to do it by, by uh, video conference. And they decided to actually uh, ask uh, to bring in people with disabilities who couldn't have flown in anyway. So they're, they're actually taking advantage of this to add a, an, an angle to bring in voices that they wouldn't normally hear. A research group that's working with colleagues in Ukraine uh, has set up a whole sort of annual research program with students and faculty at two or three Ukrainian universities and people at U of A and Grant McEwen, and they've been able to actually use fairly low-level technology, which leads to my last and sort of closing point, which is relax. The technology never works, <laughs> but face-to-face -face conferences never work that smoothly either. I mean, Constance and I were over in, in the education building thinking this meeting was happening over there. When, you know, it was supposed to start at 10. When did we actually get started? Uh, the same thing happens with the technology. So it takes five minutes to, to get it going and so on like that. But at the end of the day, you can still have a meaningful interaction, just as meaningful as the ones that you would have in a face-to-face -face thing, and you can compensate for the other things in all sorts of ways. Thank you very much.